you are welcome again to this um, daily dynamite youth devotion. Um, we pray this morning that God Almighty will bless you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you again for bringing us together here to worship at your feet. O oh Lord, we pray that you come and make your way transform our life. King of kings, after this meeting, lives will be transformed through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This topic says, Thine heart hath lifted thee. Thine heart hath lifted thee. Text, Second Kings 14. Second Kings 14. In the second year of Joash, son of Jehoaz, king of Israel, reigned. Amaziah, the son of Joash, king of Judah, he was twenty and five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned twenty and nine years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jehadan of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right. In the sight of the Lord, yet not like David his father. He did according to all things as Josh his father did. Howbeit the high places were not taken away, as yet the people did sacrifice and burnt incense on the high places. And it came to pass, as soon as the kingdom was confirmed in his hand, that he slew his servants, which he has slain the king his father. But the children of the murderers he slew, not according unto that which is written in the book of the law of Moses, wherein the Lord commanded, saying, The fathers shall not be put to death for their children, nor the children be put to death for their fathers. But every man shall put to death for his own sin. He slew of Edom in the valley of salt ten thousand, and took Sel by war, and they called the name of it Jokhel unto this day. Then Amaziah sent messengers to Josh, the son of Jehuha, son of Jehu, king of Israel, saying, Come. Let us look one another in the face. And the Jehoash, the king of Israel, sent to Amaziah, king of Judah, saying, The textile that was in Lebanon sent to the cedar that was in Lebanon, saying, Give thy daughter to my son to wife. And there passed by a white beast that was in Lebanon and threw down the textile. Thou hast in this meeting Edom. And thy heart had lived that day all. Glory of this, and tarry at home. For why shouters thou meddled to thy heart, that thou shouldest fall, even though and Judah with thee? But Amaziah would not hear. Therefore, Jehoahaz, king of Israel, went up, and he and Amaziah, king of Judah, looked one another in the face at Beshemash, which belonged to Judah. And Judah was put to the wars before Israel, and they fled every man to their tents. And the Joash, king of Israel, took Amaziah, king of Judah, the son of Joash, the son of Ahaziah, at Beshemash, and came to Jerusalem, and break down the wall of Jerusalem from the gate of Ephraim unto the corner gate. 400 cubits. And he took all the gold and silver and all the vessels that were found in the house of the Lord and in the treasures of the king's house and the hostage and returned to Samaria. Now the rest of the acts of Joash, which he did and his might 
and how he fought with Amaziah king of Judah are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel and the Jehoash slept with his father and was buried in Samaria with the kings of Israel and the Jeroboam his son reigned his seat and the Messiah the son of Joash king of Judah lived after the death of Joash son of Jehoash king of Israel 15 years and the rest of the acts of Amaziah are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah now they made a conspiracy against him in Jerusalem and he fled to Lashix but they sent after him to Lachish and slew him there and they brought him on horse and he was buried at Jerusalem with his fathers in the city of David. And all the people of Judah took Azariah, which was 16 years, and made him king instead of his father, Amaziah. He built Elat and restored it to Judah. After that, the king slept with his fathers. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. This chapter continues the history of the succession in the kingdoms, both of Judah and Israel. Our anchor verse is in verse 10, which said, Thou hast indeed smitten Edom, and thy heart had lifted thee all. When a person tries to justify his wrong, behavior by pointing to the conduct of others he isn't aiming higher enough this is also true if he patterns himself after someone who gives the Lord only partial obedience today's reading when King David lived something happened he always seek to know God's will before he undertake any risk he always seek God's face before he undertake any risk, such as war. That is one thing we know about David. But now, 200 years later, his descendant, Amaziah, makes his own judgments rather than seeking counsel or God's will, which is very, very wrong. He convinced that he is stronger than King Joash in Israel as he challenged him to meet him one-on-one -on -one in battle. He was the one who defeated 10,000 Edomites in the Valley of Salt and the captured Selah in battle, calling it Johel, as the name it is to this day. Then Amaziah sent a message to Jehoah, son of Jehoah, the son of Jehu, king of Israel, with the challenge, come meet me face to face. But Jehoah, king of Israel, replied to Amaziah, king of Judah, saying, a testio in Lebanon sent a message to a cedar in Lebanon. A testio in Lebanon sent a message to a cedar in Lebanon. He now told him, give your daughter to my son in marriage. Then a white beast in Lebanon come along and trampled the testicle underfoot. You have indeed defeated Edom and now you are arrogant. You know, arrogancy and the pride can make us misbehave. Glory in your victory but slay home. Why ask for trouble and cause your own downfall and that of Judah also? You will see this in Second Kings where we read chapter 14, 7 to 10. Brethren, pride seems to have motivated Amaziah 
the success of his early campaigns caused him to overreach. He greatly miscalculated and the Israel marched down to Judah, breached the wall of Jerusalem in the end. His own people rose up against him and they assassinated him. Listen, you might be in the same field with someone, the same age grade, the same office, business, but you might not have the same capacity with that person. There must be a difference. And what matters a lot is for you to know the capacity you are operating on. God lists pride among the most despicable sins. Now, there are six things God hates in human life. Let's name them. Haughty eyes. A lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, feet that are quick to rush into evil, man who set up problems among brothers. You will see this in Proverbs chapter 6, 16 to 19. Pride causes stands from grace, and many men and women have fallen in the same tribe. Proverb is full of warnings against pride. There are these factors or facts I'm about to list here that will help us. God considers arrogance as an abomination. That king was arrogant. He never seek the face of God. He does things the way he wants. He never called to God to know what he's about to do. He went into battles without seeking the face of God because we put ourselves above God. God considers arrogance an abomination. Number two, pride leads to disgrace because it demonstrates a lack of wisdom. Someone that is pride lacks wisdom. There is more hope for a fool than a proud man. There is more hope for a fool than a proud man. It is not glorious to seek your own glory. Very, very important. You cannot seek your own glory. The proud man fails to seek wise counsel. Whenever you see yourself as all, whenever you see yourself as everything, you know, no one can tell me what I will do. My dear, you will fail soon. A proud man does not like to hear when he is wrong. That is one thing about people that have pride in them. No, they don't want to hear when they are wrong. The only thing they want to hear is, I have made it. I have made it. But hear me with, hear me right now. No one has arrived. Don't think that you have arrived. Those people you met on your way up, I am telling you, you must meet them on your way down. In the end, pride is sin. It's listed among the three roots that causes sin. The lust of the flesh, that is seeking wrong pleasures. The lust of the eyes, seeking wrong possessions. And the, the pride of life, seeking wrong power. First John chapter 2, 1 to 6. Finally, Jesus on the other hand, he gave us the supreme example of humility as opposed to the pride. In his own words, he said something. He said he only did what he saw his father doing. That he will not do what that is contrary to the will of his father. Paul said something in Philippians chapter 2. That though equal with God, he took the form of a servant. Humbled himself. Humbled himself. Very, very necessary. My dear, you have to humble yourself. Humble yourself. And was obedient unto death. Humility leads to all the benefits that pride prevents. It gives wisdom 
salvation and the honor. The proud man is sure to fail. But God will exalt the humble. The proud man is sure to fail. But God will exalt the humble. If you are pride, you must fail. But if you are humble, God will exalt you. Food for thought for this day devotion. Pride goes before destruction. Pride goes before destruction. Let us pray. My Lord, please deliver us from all forms of pride through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. See you same time tomorrow. God bless you. Thank you. I hope you are blessed by the word. Join us tomorrow on the Daily Dynamite.